Thank you, Helen. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all for attending the first JASA webinar for 2024. As Helen just noted, I'm Victoria Melendez, a JASA program committee member working with Amy Poster, Allison Tolman, and Leah Robinson. For those of you who are new to JASA, the organization promotes the study and appreciation of Japanese art and is currently celebrating its 50th anniversary. In connection with this celebration, JASA has organized an exhibition entitled Meiji Modern, 50 Years of New Japan that was on view of the Asia Society in New York until just recently and will move to the University of Chicago's Smart Museum from March 21st until June 9th and then on to the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston from July 7th until September 15th. We hope that you can see this extraordinary show. Now, without further ado, please allow me to introduce you to today's speaker, Dr. Aaron Rio. Dr. Rio is a specialist in pre-modern Japanese painting and is associate curator of Japanese art at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. He earned his PhD from Columbia University where his research focused on ink painting in the Kamakura period from the 14th to 16th centuries. Without further ado, welcome Dr. Rio. Hi everyone. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jasa, uh, for the invitation and for organizing this. Um, uh, this is an exhibition that uh, was born out of a series of um, surveys of the Metropolitan Museum of Arts collection that I was conducting um, over 2020 and 2021 um, during the pandemic, mostly, um, as soon as access to the collections were available to us again um, after the pandemic. Um, those um, uh, surveys became the... Um, the crux of this exhibition that was meant to spotlight um, primarily the Buddhist art collection, but more broadly the religious, um, um, the collection of religious art. Uh, and, and, and I wanted to think about it quite broadly. Um, there are, uh, there are a, a multitude of inspirations for this um, exhibition, but um, 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 some of which, some of which involve um, projects that I was, I was working on, for example, at, at other museums. <laughs> Um, uh, but um, this is uh, less exhibition and more um, rotation of, of the Japanese galleries at the Met, which are 10,000 square feet of, of pretty extraordinary space <laughs> um, um, that were created in the, in the mid 80s um, to tell a story about Japanese art and um, curators, some of whom are in the, in the audience tonight, which makes me especially um, nervous to be talking. Um, uh, some of them, um, many of them, have have told an, a really extraordinary stories about um, um, Japanese art. Sometimes with a historical lens, lens sometimes not. Um, 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 but every one of them uh, more extraordinary than the previous one. Um, this will not be one of those. This is just a rotation of the Japanese galleries. Um, um, uh, in any case, uh, um, it's called Anxiety uh, in Open Japanese Art because um, I, I wanted it to be an ex exhibition that um, wasn't about sects of Buddhism and and types of Buddhist art and and things like that. So, that, so, there, so while there is a bit of um, sort of basic knowledge about Buddhist art um, to be found here, certainly um, um, I wanted to tell a story that was about people, uh, I'm sorry, uh, to curate an exhibition that was about people. Um, so it's it's focused on stories, um, works of art that that offer opportunities to um, sort of both um, dive into the surface and look um, sort of deeply at the details, but also other works that um, that ask us to sort of pull back and ask questions in and around uh, the objects, how they were created, how they were used, um, um, who did what with them and when over the years. At the heart of it um, um, is uh, an exhibition that is um, sort of um, uh, an exhibition concept that is um, as I've described it uh, many times, um, about um, objects that somehow interact with, uh, somehow help us, somehow um, serve a purpose um, on 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 this on this in this realm, um, in our communications with with different realms. Um, um, many of them are um, expressions of anxiety about about death, about unnatural death, um, uh, things such as. Um, Mass casualties, war, um, uh, disease, um, things like that. 
um, and I was I was I was scouring the collection during the pandemic, thinking um, broadly about um, the status of religious objects. Um, uh, I'm sorry, there's a dog barking just over there. <laughs> this is an unexpected hiccup. I'm sorry. Um, um, actually, um, um, give me um, um, 20 seconds. I'll be right back. I'm so sorry. I, I'll be right back. I'd rather take 20 seconds now than um and let them out than than let them bark for the next hour. So here we go. Um the exhibition is um is about um uh, fear of death and dying um and the afterlife. And um some of the objects are about rituals of death, some of them are about mourning and grieving. Um, um some of them are expressions, um, depictions of uh, of of things like suffering um and um 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 uh, um death itself. Uh, the first gallery sets some of the sort of uh, basic um, uh, parameters of, of Buddhist art um, um, uh, for the audience. Um, it, it's anchored by this sculpture of Bisha Monten. Um, um, this is a Heian period sculpture whose um, surface was uh, repaired about two or three times um, over the over the centuries. It's on loan to us after having been um, on view at LACMA for some years. Um, um, uh, its surface is is completely of the 14th and 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 um, 17th century. However, as as has been just it's been uh, researched by um, scholars in Japan. Um, but it 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 even in its in its sort of history of repairs, it in fact because of its history of repairs, um, inside it has inscriptions, for example, that that help us understand why it was important, um, why it was important for this to be repaired. For example, in the 14th century, 200 years after it had been created. Um, its surface completely re redone. Um, in fact, we learned from an inscription that it was the emperor himself who um, uh, commissioned its repair because of because it was placed in a sort of geographically advantageous uh, position. Um, uh, that uh, presumably being related uh, to the to the north northwest, um, because this is Bisha Montan, the guardian of the north, and the north is the most powerful um, um, source of negative energy in the cosmos. And so this is the guardian of that uh, particularly um, um, uh, challenging uh, cardinal direction. And just uh, some of you might not be familiar with the iconography, so I can explain it for you. Um, he's a, um, you'll see it again and again in this exhibition. He's a um, guardian figure. He appears in Central Asian garb. Even the color scheme is is based on um, um, the type of thing you might see in, see in Tang Dynasty tomb figurines um, of Buddhist and non-Buddhist figures, um, but a, a guardian figure. Um, and he holds, in this case, um, um, in his left hand, um, a, a pagoda, uh, which, of course, is, is a representation of the Buddhist teachings, which he protects. Um, but on a practical level, um, it's um, on the ground, as it were. It's this, um, it's this ability to protect from uh, cosmic negative elements. Um, um uh that is that is that is at the heart of his his uh his popularity we might say in the exhibition i've paired him with um uh this uh, other example of a bisha monten um this is a, 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 a an image known as a tobatsu bisha monten this comes to the met from the burke collection um, it's a late Heian period image, but it's based on a slightly earlier image of Chinese origin that was worshipped in, in China. I'm sorry, 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 I misspoke. It was it's a Chinese origin, but it was worshipped in Kyoto. In fact, it was placed in a gate, um, again at a strategically advantageous um, um, position, as it were, as it relates to the directions. Um, but uh, but so powerful that um, um, images of it were were created um, uh, like this one uh, more than a hundred years after uh, the. Um, beginning of the worship of that Chinese image in Kyoto. This was recently conserved at the Met um, because its um, interior was was so entirely um, uh, uh, eaten up by by bugs that it could barely sustain itself. And so our, our incredible conservators um, um, did a really remarkable work. Um, um, as well as some um, art technicians and um, 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 others who helped um, keep this thing uh, standing <laughs> for the last year and a half. It's quite remarkable. 
the surface has also been revealed by that repair. You can see um, pigments here. And also the shape of the figures um, on which Bishamonten stands. He's standing on the back of, of other Hindu gods, in this case, the goddess Jiten, um, the goddess of, of the earth, and her um, sort of childlike um, attendance. Speaking of childlike attendance, um, <laughs> this is a sort of um, angry, childlike, but ultimately ferocious um, warrior figure. Um, not not that not that high about a foot that begins the exhibition. It's another one of these um, guardians of, of of the directions. In this case, it's a Daishogun. Um, and these were actually moved um, occasionally um, so that they could be in even more advantageous positions. Um, um, so this is just a constellation of things in the in the opening exhibit, part of the exhibition that that help us understand um, the role of um, the role of these objects um, in the lives of people. They're um, they're flanking this um, um, one of a set of five scrolls that um, you can see here on the on the slide. Um, this is one of five scrolls. I might say here um, one of my five scrolls that are on view right now. Um, this is not a scene from one of the ones ones that's on view right now, but one rather one that we showed in a previous rotation. Um, uh, but it shows the descent of the thunder god um, um, from the upper right. Um, and it uh, he is um, attacking a group of courtiers, uh, as you can see. And I think I have here another example. Um, this is from a set of scrolls that describe the deification of 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 Sugawara no Michizane, who's a Heian period courtier. And um, he was he was wronged in, in life, and so after death, he comes back. His anger comes back as the thunder god. Um, and these are images of that uh, of that scene taking place, and they serve as justification for his worship, um, the construction of 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 a shrine in his uh, to worship him, um, um, which is um, in Kyoto. Um, I did, there's some really really extraordinary details in this set of scroll. This is not on view, um, but uh, you can see here that the 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 this is just a tiny detail, maybe not more than a couple of centimeters. And you have an artist working with ink and and some kind of red pigment um, um, and uh, maybe a little bit of green for that drum over there. And then kirikane, um, of course, ink for the cloud. I'm sorry, but kirikane, which is um, cut gold um, leaf um, here for the for the lightning that's shooting out of the thunder god. These are details from the scroll that's actually on view, um, which uh, which um, uh, narrate a, a trip through hell that's relevant to the story. Um, um, you can see a figure here being guided by um, um, a figure that looks an awful lot like Bisham Monten, as you can see um, in the same gallery in the exhibition. And he's pointing to the to the left as you open the scroll toward a gate. There's a missing section here, um, but ultimately what we see is there the king of hell uh, waiting. Um, and there are um, sinners below, you can see, who are awaiting their punishment um, or uh, perhaps awaiting their judgment by the king of hell, but he's being greeted by... Um, here he's greeting him. I'm here. I'm sorry. He's greeting him here. And then um, they continue on into uh, the depths of hell, as it were, and are greeted by this fellow um, who points them in the direction of this pretty horrific scene uh, inside of demons um, spearing sufferers in, in, in a hell realm. Uh, across the gallery in this first space is um, a different kind of presentation. Again, it's, it's about the sort of um, setting up the parameters of Buddhist art here. What, how do objects serve? A, what purpose do they serve in the ritual environment? What purpose do they serve in the monastic environment, et cetera? Um, and so I have two different types of images, both from the um, uh, late Kamakura, early Nambokucho period. Uh, left here is an image of Aizen Myo. This is a, um, a wisdom king, but it's a ferocious manifestation of a Buddha. Um, and we'll look a little bit more closely at him in a second. And then it, right here is a is a um, a, a really wonderful image of of Maitreya, a bodhisattva, uh, to be a, a Buddha in the future, um, descending from um, from a different realm. Um, uh, we're not going to look at that closely because I don't have great images, but um, um, I encourage you to come to the Med and look very closely at it while it's on view because it's very beautiful, um, especially the Kirikane. Um, uh, in the middle here is a display of, of, of another scroll that we're going to look very closely at now. Um, in the left half of that case there is um, a scroll that is um, an illustration, the oldest extant, in fact, illustration of a certain chapter of the Lotus Sutra called the, the Universal Gateway Chapter. And it's devoted to a presentation of the Bodhisattva 
um, um, uh, Kannon. Sorry, just a second my turn. Um, uh, a presentation of the Bodhisattva Kannon. Um, 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 a particularly particularly popular uh, deity in Japan and in other, uh, well, throughout East Asia, really. Um, 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 and um, when you see these images, you'll know why. This is a, a standard um, assembly seen at the beginning of the of the scroll that shows a Buddha um, surrounded by disciples and others. It opens like this. There are um, snippets of text. Um, if you've if you've read the Lotus Sutra, you know that the language is very very simple, and the Chinese is is even simpler here. You can see it right. Um, just those um, not even two lines to describe this um, image. That's actually pretty complicated um, for something being painted in um, late medieval Japan. Um, I'm sorry, early medieval Japan. Um, uh, so you have an, an image that uh, a two part image. Um, um, again, this opens the scroll after that assembly image. Um, and then the, 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 the scripture simply says, um, um, what happens um, if you if um, <laughs> if you catch fire, um, if you catch fire, um, call upon the name of Kanon and, 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 and he she will will, will be there. Um, it's pretty simple. And it repeats repeats that pattern many times um, in different sort of scenes. Um, this one is particularly special. Um, as you can see from the details, there's a man here, Chinese, of course, because this is based on um, a, a Chinese work, probably a book. Um, uh, um, uh, and so he wears a Chinese courtier's cap, <laughs> but he's, he's in a lotus pond surrounded by flames. Um, um, and he's praying to Kanon in the upper right, who's descending on a cloud um, and painted in gold um, to, um, to offer salvation uh, in that moment. Uh, the next scene shows, for example, um, uh, this um, um, in case uh, of a flood, um, um, uh, a condom will come and rescue you. And so there are details, for example, of figures um, and houses floating in a flooded in a flooded area. You can see trees at the horizon line. This is um, um, what you're looking at is um, heavily abraded or heavily damaged, I suppose, um, heavy heavy losses of the azurite pigment that um, was used to paint this uh, this this flood. But you can see very clearly the figures. This is the Kamnon from that very same school. We were able to show uh, quite a few variations of, of or different images of Kamnon from the Kamakura, Mur Muromachi, and Nambokujo, uh, Kamakura, Nambokujo, and Muromachi periods um, in sculptural and painted form. Um, some of these are 12 inches tall, some of these are seven feet tall. But um, 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 in the galleries, I was able to tell a couple of stories. So here we're looking at a um, 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 a Nambokucho period a sculpture, a gilded sculpture of, of Juichi Menkanon, the 11 headed Bodhisattva of compassion, the same one we were just looking at, accompanied by an image from the Monomachi period of the same deity descending from a cloud um, painted in gold and, and beautiful, colorful pigments. Um, um, it's a really lovely combination of things. Back to the, back to the scroll. Um, this is another scene that shows um, after this presentation of, of, of you know, um, um, what happens if, <laughs> what happens if you're caught in a flood, what happens if you're caught in a, in a, in a, in a fire, there's, there, there are things like this, what happens if you're a criminal, um, and you can see two people in the foreground, one who, um, it will, uh, the, the, the sutra says, if you're, if you're a criminal, if you've, if you've done wrong, then you suffer your punishment. If you aren't, if you aren't, you didn't worry. You'll, you'll condom will, will save you. And so you have this detail of a person breaking free of their shackles, and running at the left, at the lower left of the scene. And then there's a presentation of other forms that the deity takes. Um, so you have, um, um, uh, for example, at far left here, an example of Kamnon um, emerging in the form of Bishamonten, because for whatever reason that's most helpful um, to um, to the worshiper, to the believer. And so you have uh, Bishamonten with demons down below who've been subdued, and then above a seated Kamnon descending again on a cloud. This is just an interesting scene that um, is, I, I, I believe it opens the scene that's currently on view. There are four rotations of this exhibition. This one has um, shows um, the wife of a wealthy man. Um, she's she's barely visible down there below in this detail on that side of the railing. Um, um, uh, this is a condon um, as the wife of a wealthy man, if that's what is necessary for salvation. 
Um, uh, this um, work, um, um, this is really about uh, preservation of um, an urgency to preserve the word, to preserve the teachings of Buddhism. Um, 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 that were especially important to the Japanese at certain times in their history, but especially in the late medi medieval period, and a period that is is, is generally called mappo um, when we're talking when we're talking about um, Buddhist history, Buddhist notions of time, um, um, and mappo is a period during which the Buddhist teachings cannot spread, um, during which disasters occur, um, or or disasters are worse. Um, <laughs> And so um, one of the things that uh, that, that uh, if you find yourself in that position, if you find yourself at the end of times, as the Japanese believe they were um, uh, um, um, by the early medieval period, um, there's an urgency to 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 preserve, to preserve the teachings. Um, and one of the ways um, is to is to bury things. Um, one of the ways is to uh, um, uh, recycle, retain, reuse. <laughs> in this case, um, we're looking at a few lines of a medieval hand scroll. Um, um, uh, by a famous calligrapher, a courtier, um, that's been salvaged in hanging scroll form, probably of the early modern period or later, um, 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 and then and then remounted again in the modern period um, um, and purchased by some very smart curators at the Med in the '90s. Um, it's a really really lovely um, um, fragment that describes um, some of the advantages of of. It just happens to describe this passage from the Lotus Sutra that. Um, um, describe some of the advantages one one gains by um, by practicing by being a good Buddhist. Um, uh, you might see in this passage the repetition of the of the character kaoru uh, in Japanese to fragrance. This is a passage describing um, um, an enhancement of the sen the sense of of, of smell um, um, for that um, that 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 people attain um, that people gain if they're good Buddhists and if they practice um, if they practice the the teachings of the Lotus Sutra. Um, and so these have been salvaged. It's just, it's just, it's just a sort of um, fragment of of a, of a really complicated chapter, but um, um, it goes, it, it 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 describes everything from the smell of flowers to the smell of men to the smell of children and women and things like this. Once you're a good Buddhist, you can sort of differentiate, presumably bad from good, different types of people. Um, um, that's what that's what that's what this uh, passage says. There's also this image of. Um, um, of Isaac Mill, we return to it. I'm spending a lot of time in the first gallery um, 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 because it's conceptually important, but um, this is a, a Muromachi period image, actually, an early Muromachi period image of, of, of Aizen Mill, um, a wisdom king. Um, this is a wrathful emanation of a Buddha, as I said previously. Um, it happens to um, be uh, particularly beautiful uh, because it includes a lot of moriage, um, um, all of the um, brightest gold you can see on the urn upon which the deity sets, as well as all of his metallic implements, for example, those are um, um, painted in in moriage, which is um, 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 the use of gofun, a white shell pigment, uh, a shell white pigment on the surface, um, and then covered in, uh, painted again with gold paint, ginde, kinde, I'm sorry. Um, um, and so it, it stands out from the surface, it's three-dimensional. Um, and in the image, it, it reads quite bright. Um, this is displayed in the galleries next to uh, images um, that help us understand how Buddhist images are made. Are made. I'm sorry. Um, 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 in the workshop environment of monasteries, so we have multiple um, images of similar deities. Um, some of them are eyes and himself. Others are of other wrathful emanations of Buddhas um, and and Myo, uh, such as Dai Toku here at left. And a wrathful emanation of Kanon from the collection of John Weber, there a sculpture in front of him. That's actually the horse-headed Kanon. This shows, for example, the um, um, uh, the, this this drawing at left is, at right is what's called a zuzo, an iconographical drawing um, that would have been um, copied after um, um, an image um, that um, and then circulated to among monasteries, for example. Um, um, and used by artists to create uh, Buddhist images, Buddhist sculptures, Buddhist paintings. Um, and so you have indications sometimes of color. You have the names of the deities here, um, but uh, just a just a relatively swiftly drawn drawing. Um, and then again, salvage in the early modern period, of course. But um, in this case, we're looking at an image of Dai Tokumyo at right, and um, the Aizen painting at left, which I I especially like in the gallery 
it's more difficult to see here in the image, but it darkens as it goes as you, as it goes up the scroll as as you as as the scroll goes up. Um, you can see it sort of just above the head of 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 Eisen here. It was presumably used at, on an altar, um, and so lots of um, smoke from incense and other things um, um, darkened it. And so it feels um, it feels it feels like its environment. It feels like its ritual environment. This is um, just moving on to the next gallery. Uh, this is um, uh, the next gallery uh, sets up um, 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 a theme that I called uh, the fear of hell and um, 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 the hope of, 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 of paradise. I think it's called something like this. Um, and it's a two gallery space that um, first is anchored by um, images of deities descending from the heavens, specifically salvific deities. Um, and one in particular um, becomes the focus of, of, of the gallery because of our um, um, Buddhist altar. Uh, so here we're looking at um, a presentation that is, of course, composite. It's made up of sculptures from our collection, but it's, um, it, re it represents a raigo, a welcoming descent of Amida, a Buddha in the center, flanked by bodhisattvas, kanon and seishiya, left and right here. And then um, we have... These are sculptures that came to the Met, by the way, in the 20th century, and they're accompanied here on the on the Buddhist altar by these wonderful um, 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 celestials uh, from the Burke collection that have been taken from some kind of tableau um, and are remounted on these plaques. And so um, this is the second time where we're showing them like this. Basically, the 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 altar has been turned into um, a presentation of the descent of the um, uh, triptych of uh, the triad, the Amida triad. Um, um, and that's also the subject of most of the paintings in this gallery. So we're going to look more closely at this theme. Um, uh, typically, we would not, uh, on the altar, you can see that we have a seated Amida accompanied by standing uh, um, bodhisattvas. That's the, that would not be typical. Um, of course, you would have a, um, a seated Buddha with seated bodhisattvas um, or, or a standing Buddha with standing bodhisattvas. We have um, these come from different sets, and so we've done them this way. Uh, this has all, all kinds of alterations made to the surface, of course, and when you get close, you can just see how much of it survives, including a lot of the of the malachite and azurite that was used to depict the hair, for example, here, and the, and the, the red pigment that was used for the lips. Much of the gilding of the skin survives. These were um, two different paintings of the descent, welcoming descent of Amida alone. Um, uh, the one at right was shown in the first rotation, and the one at left is on view right now. The one at right, of course, is not in the Japanese image, it's a Southern Song Chinese image, one of two in the, Jap in the, in the Mets collection that um, come from Japanese collections. Um, and they're the types of image that were, images that were made in, um, in Buddhist uh, painting workshops in China, in, 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 in coastal Zhejiang province, and, um, and exported to Japan. And this is, this is one of those images. Um, um, it's now understood to be an image of Amida um, from the um, uh, um, from the Yuan Dynasty. Um, um, although in Edo period Japan, it seems to have been identified as a shaka, according to an inscription on the back of it, um, which is available on our website. But in any case, um, it is currently identified as Amida, and we um, we've, we're showing it here um, uh, with this Muromachi period image that I'm uh, that is on view currently. Um, that I'm going to show you more closely because I like the surface a lot and I like the Muromachi period. <laughs> this is the first rotation um, that I've been able to focus on Muromachi period images, and so I'm quite happy to to zoom in on some of these later Buddhist and medieval later med medieval Buddhist um, images. This one um, has quite a bit of damage done to it um, that's been done to it over the years because it probably was painted from the backside. Um, um, and and so during previous remountings, um, um, as the backing papers are removed, someone um, took took some of the painting with it, and so you can see this ghost outline of a of a double halo, a halo behind the head, and a and a, and a mandorla, a body a body halo, um, and then some repainted clouds because those were probably painted from behind as well in white. Um, um, but all the things that were painted on the surface of this really really wonderful <laughs> Buddhist image um, from medieval Japan survive, and they really are wonderful to look at. Um, you're seeing again. Uh, I, I I paired this with the Aizen Mio in this rotation purposely because I wanted to show people um, um, the, the Moriage um, in 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 Buddhist painting, and this is this is another example 
um, uh, quite a bit um, more finely more finely done than 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 on the uh, than on the eyes and mule. Um, you can see it here in the detailing of the fag brick that's used on the um, the sort of translucent outer garment of this of this of this Buddha, um, as well as along the hem of the of the of the inner inner room. Um, I think I have some good details. Yeah, it's harder to see in studio photography than it is in the gallery, actually, because we we were able to get a little bit of raking light on it. So in the in the gallery, in the right light, you can um, you can see um, just how much uh, just how far away from the surface this this detailing stands. Um, I'm talking here about the contour lines, for example, of the peonies and their leaves, um, and then these um, these rondelles of the of the fabric, and of course here the the wonderful um, uh, floral. Uh, motif that of that particular part of the kesa. Um, uh, welcoming descent images are not also um, simple as a single deity descending, a de single Amida descending, or a single Kandan descending. This is an example from the from the Rockefeller collection, the Abbey, Abbey Aldridge Rockefeller collection um, that came to the Met in the forties, and it um, it's quite large. And it's probably used in a monastic environment, and it shows that deity in the middle, Amida, standing, um, accompanied by an entire host of deities, bodhisattvas, and others who are um, singing and dancing. Um, his body is, of course, painted as others, as the others are in gold. Um, in this case, cut gold and uh, gold paint. Um, um, I have some more details here. This is the current rotation as it is. These are the 14th century sculptures that flank the Amida on the on the altar. And here they are in the painting. Our sculptures are missing, um, as you can see, the, the Kandon here, um, one of the two bodhisattvas that flanks um, um, Amida and typically carries a small lotus on which the dead are placed when they're transported to heaven. Um, it's missing from our sculpture, um, but you can see that the, the Kandon has has his hands lowered in order to hold um, that particular that particular thing. And here you can see it in the hands of Kandon in this at the bottom of this painting that I was showing you before. They're offering in here the lower of the above part of the image to the viewer. Of course, the viewer serves as the as the object of the descent. Um, we are the we are the saved. Here are some details of the Bodhisattva's playing music. I love this. Um, one of the lower and left here in this detail is playing the zither and looking out at us. <laughs> some lovely dancing figures. Uh, this is a new addition to the collection. We were able to show actually um, three uh, embroidered images, um, which are common in um, uh, Pure Land practice, Pure Land devotional practice. Um, um, and this is uh, the one that is on view right now. It's actually a recent acquisition to the Met, um, um, something spearheaded by my colleague, Monica Binchik. Um, This is a Muromachi period embroidered image of, of the descent of Amida, um, at the Amida triad, quite a bit simpler than the one we were just looking at because he's not accompanied now by all of the musicians and celestials, but just um, just with Kandon and Seishi. Um, I'm, I'm cutting out the, the early modern now um, mounting and just showing you the inner image, which is an embroidered image, as you can see, a very, very tiny thing. Um, if you're looking for it here in this image in the gallery, it's way back there, that little orange thing. It's a tiny little thing, um, and it's wonderful. Um, it shows um, Amida in the middle, accompanied by, again, Kandon and Seishi. And Kandon extends uh, the lotus pedestal to this little figure right here. Um, it's a little girl, and she holds uh, um, uh, prayer beads in her hand. Um, and you can see that um, distinctively the hair of the deity and the hair of the little girl. And if we go back, the the stripes of the the the, the patchwork of the kesa, the the robe of the Buddha, as well as his hair. This black is 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 distinctively shiny. <laughs> it's because it's um it's human hair in this case, um, uh, which was commonly used in in pure line images, often made by women. Um, and these images were used um, um, in a variety of ways, but but um, um, at the deathbed, and also to pray for the well-being of of loved ones that are lost um, after after they've passed. And so you can see here Kondo extending that 
um, lotus pedestal to a little girl that we can assume was lost. And maybe this is something that was created by her mother. Um, it's a Muromachi period image that's based on um, 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 Oh, you know what? I have, I have other examples, so I'm just going to pass that and come back to it in a second. Um, we were able to show a couple of other embroidered images. This is um, surprisingly the same thing. Um, this is the descent of Amida and Seishi and Kanman, represented by Sanskrit characters um, floating in golden orbs above a ritual table. And so this is actually the deathbed ritual um, painted within an image. And so the image itself serves as the ritual space. Um, um, it's, it's, a, it's a really wonderful thing from the Packard collection. Um, and we were able to show that as well in the first rotation. Here's another example of the same thing from the Burke Collection um, um, at the Minneapolis Institute of Art uh, right here. There are a lot of these out there and they um, they differ quite um, quite a lot. The image we have um, on view now, as you can see, is based on um, painted images of the of the early Kamakura period, primarily like this one. Um, um, that shows um, um, that descent uh, without, of course, the addition of, um, of of the little girl here that's been added into the embroidered image of the Muromachi period. You can see that probably um, 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 the light the the light that that comes from Amida and, and is directed right down to the to the little girl. There there are two stripes. You can see there there was something. Um, there was something there, of course, but it's um, it's been lost. Uh, this is not on view right now, but it's a, um, um, uh, it tells a similar type of story of of personal salvation, um, 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 and and I suppose um, um, I suppose of mourning. This is um, a painting that was commissioned by a man in um, um, Eastern Edo. Um, uh, and in in Stamachi, <laughs> and, and 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 he um, um, he seems to have lost his wife, um, and so this image of Amida, um, accompanied by twenty five celestial beings, um, um, has this long inscription on the back of it that describes um, why it came together and why he decided to to create this image um, in honor of his wife that he'd lost, um, and it shows her. Although the image is just a stock image, of course, there at the bottom of the image um, with Kanon extending the lotus pedestal down to her. Um, and the description tells us um, another story uh, that this has, um, um, there are multiple inscriptions here actually that 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 tell us that it's been handed down um, with her um, ashes uh, um, retained in the uh, roller bars, the jikosaki at the lower left and right of the scroll. So if you roll the scroll up, um, you can still see, um, you still have visual access to um, uh, um, her remains and perhaps those of another person. Though not on view right now, I, um, I can't pass up the opportunity to show this because um, it was the one of the paintings that inspired this part of the exhibition. Um, it shows um, the descent of Amida and 25 celestial beings um, um, in a distinctively Japanese landscape um, in fall. <laughs> uh, you can tell there are um, red leaves and things, I think, when we get into details. Um, yeah, if you look at left here in the in the overall composition with the with the scroll removed now, um, uh, we're looking at the, that's the descent in the lower two thirds of the painting, um, Amida with um, bodhisattvas, um, and then a curtain of, of, of small Buddhas um, um, to suggest the, 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 the multiplicity of, 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 of Buddhas, um, almost like a protective force as they descend from the cosmos. And then in the upper register, um, um, that entire group of figures um, returns from the right, from right to left. And the place they're returning to is this very colorfully described uh, Chinese building up there that's paradise. We'll get to that in a second. But what I'm showing you here on the screen is what's happening in the lower right, um, which is actually um, the subject of the painting. Um, and that is the salvation of this person who's um, sitting inside this distinctively Japanese building um, on tatami mats. And you can just see the front of, um, or a sort of a, a, a profile view of him. Um, uh, uh, note the bush clovers just below the, um, just, just on this side of the veranda, so you can tell that it's, you can tell that it's full. And so this is Kanon again, um, with other attendants holding um, canopies over him, and he he extends a lotus pedestal to 
a man who we know to be um, 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 a warrior because this, it turns out, is a mandala, um, um, uh, um, a, uh, an illustration, as it were, um, of a dream. Um, and so an illustration of a teaching. Um, um, uh, and and so um, that dream was um, an experience, a, a dream experienced by Honen, who was a founder of, of, of Pure Land Buddhism in Japan. And he talks about the salvation of a particularly um, 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 ruthless warrior during the civil wars of the Heian period, which serve as a sort of sub-theme of this exhibition. We'll see a lot of different exhibitions, I'm sorry, a lot of different images um, of, of those wars um, 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 from the um, from throughout Japanese history in this exhibition, but this is just the, the first among several. Um, 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 essentially, the image describes um, that even he um, having 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 done what needed to be done as a as a good pure land Buddhist, um, was able to be saved because of the power of, of Amida, um, and so it, so even even someone as bad as him um, can be saved, and so it was important that that dream be preserved, and so it's preserved as an image. It's called a Gosho Mandala, and there aren't that many examples of it, and there aren't that many examples of it um, that are this um, finely executed. Although um, th this example from the Packard collection is is um, damaged in various ways. A lot of the pigment is lost, but it's very legible um, um, and um, a really beautiful thing. In detail, it's very gorgeous. We've shown it in a very shallow case so you can get close up and see all of the gold. This is the return um, uh, for, of that group to the to paradise in the upper uh, in the upper register of the painting. And so you have Kanno now um, standing two figures behind Amida um, who holds his hands in a mudra. Um, just Kannon has um, the lotus pedestal we've been seeing over, over and over again in sculptural form and in these painted images. And here it's closed up because um, this is, um, this is um, um, inside is, is, the, is, the, is the preserved um, um, being, the preserved, uh, the preserved person of, of that warrior who's being saved, being delivered to the pure land here. Uh, this passage is really, really beautiful. There are, um, of course, we're looking at um, uh, um, azurite blue, uh, two different types of blue here with, with gofun and multiple um, types of gold layer, one on top of the other in the, in the, in the pond that, um, that is just in front of this building. It's distinctively Chinese um, um, uh, because uh, the images on which it's based were Chinese. I'm showing here um, a scene from the gallery as it's currently displayed that shows that type of mandala right here, um, a mandala of Amida um, um, in, in paradise, the place to which um, believers hope to be reborn. And this is a scene from the middle of that painting, a tiny little detail of Amida flanked by those deities now. That gallery of um, salvation and hope is followed by a more challenging gallery of images of hell. Um, um, and it begins with these, um, or I suppose I, I should say it was inspired by this, this set of um, five hanging scrolls from the collection that again are not Japanese, but rather Chinese. They were um, like the one before made in, in coastal Zhejiang and exported to Japan as a group of 10 originally. The Met has five of them. Um, um, and they show um, five of the 10 kings of hell um, uh, uh, each of them here is, is shown as a, as a Chinese court official seated behind a desk. Um, and then in the lower register is where we're going to focus um, today. You can see um, various types of things going on, but um, what they what, what we're looking at are um, sinners, sufferers in hell, having received or are beginning to receive um, the punishments that are being um, um, administered by this 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 group of 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 of, 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 of officials above the kings of hell um, and some of them show this is um, um, not what's on view right now but it's I think the image is, is especially um, um, interesting um, though a little bit hard to see because of the damage but we have another detail coming up that'll help you understand this the the demon itself is is well preserved and so you can see it over there as sort of animal like demon wearing um, um, something akin to the clothing of Bisham Monten, something sort of a Central Asian origin, a sort of a Central Asian origin, a sort of warrior figure. And he has a large spear and he's poking it at these folks who are um, cast up in a net. 
um, uh, that's their punishment. Um, they're in a in a sort of in a just just rolling around in a group, being poked at by this demon. Um, and the painting has um, been has suffered quite a bit of loss, and so you just can see part of part of the the horde of people inside the net. This is that detail, and you can see here um, blood pouring from their bodies, for example. Here's another um, image from one of the foregrounds of those paintings, or one of the um, uh, the foregrounds of one of those paintings. Um, this is a, um, a scene that you see uh, often in Japanese images of hell, um, and it helps us understand its Chinese origin. Um, the, um, um, the the hell cart. <laughs> Um, um it uh it shows a demon a sort of green skinned demon pushing this um, cart that's aflame as people are caught up in it and then again you can see that the depictions are actually quite um quite hard to look at uh, so we have these in the in the galleries i'm showing these one in each rotation of the set of five chinese images alongside um um a 19th century hellscape um from japan um, that is of a type um, that's quite common in Japan, actually, um, in the Edo period, um, and it shows all of the hell, uh, all of the hells updated um, um, in the, after the medieval period in Japan. Um, but many of them are familiar. You can see in the galleries comparisons, for example, between the Chinese paintings and this similar scene from the 19th century painting. In this hell, um, the center is forced to look into a mirror and 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 see his sin over and over. This is a similar example of, of, a, of a slightly earlier um, hellscape that was introduced in an exhibition um, that Emily Sano curated in San Antonio a few years ago. Here in the foreground of that painting, you can see Jizo. In the gallery, we have it right next to this um, masterpiece from the collection by Kaike. Um, with all of its kirikane and, and gold decoration preserved. There are a display of um, five, uh, two painted and three sculptural jizo in the galleries, um, 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 kitty cornered from that view I've just shown. These are two of the painted jizo that are on view. Some of them show a, um, a, a more, um, they both show the descent of Jizo, but some of them show action, um, uh, sort of a very compassionate image like this one from the from the Havemeyer collection that's 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 called the Mikaidi Jizo looking back, Jizo looking back. And so there's this very loving face um on the on the Jizo as he descends. Um, this is a very different type of image that also has Jizo on it there in the shoulder, but it's a um a painting of the hell courtesan who has all of uh, all of hell incorporated on her kimono um, here in this very large image by Kunisada II, um, another recent acquisition, that um, you can see in the very center of the image, the king of hell, uh, as we've been as we've been seeing, seated behind a desk here at left. And then at right, you can see Jizo, as we've been seeing him in a graveyard with children. Um, these paintings all suggest um, um, something of the um, um, negative um, um, forces of the cosmos <laughs> um, and the positive aspects um, of the positive salvation as well. Um, um, but it all feels a little bit far from life itself. Um, and so the exhibition pivots here, um, um, inspired originally by this uh, funny little um, 17th century bokuseki, a Zen calligraphy from the collection that um, just has two characters on it that say Jigoku, uh, um, uh, hell, earth prison. Um, and um, we're hanging, we hung it in the, um, in the showing room at the Met here in the 17th century, um, um, a replication of a 17th century structure um, um, in order to, to, to ask the question, uh, what would happen um, if you went to a tea ceremony? in the 17th century, perhaps at Daitokuji, where um, the attributed artist of this work is said to have been active um, and found yourself um, encountering this um, calligraphy that said hell um, in, 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 um, in a tea gathering, for example. Um, it suggests, um, 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 it helps us understand um, something that is essential 
to Buddhist teachings, which is that suffering is um, is at the heart of 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 of, of life um, and of existence, um, and that um, humans find themselves in one of the levels of hell itself, actually, but uniquely. Um, there, it's it's one of the realms in which there um there 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 are possibilities for salvation, and so um um this pivot here brings us a little bit down to earth, and so it it introduces a section of the exhibition that is about images of hell. I'm sorry, uh, images of war, and of pilgrimage efforts towards salvation, but it's anchored by Buddhist images that show um, suffering in the life of the historical Buddha. Um, such as this one that shows him encountering suffering for the first time. And his death. This is the um, Paranirvana of the Buddha, a monumental painting. He's surrounded by grieving figures who cry. Um, um, some of them cry, but others are, are sort of stoically um, um, praying because they are aware that he is... Uh, um, he's done his thing. <laughs> um, he's accomplished what needed to be accomplished. And so um, he's escaped um, the cycles of rebirth. Um, and so there's really nothing to be sad about. It's um, it's salvation itself. But um, as I've described to a lot of people who've seen the exhibition, it's also an opportunity for Buddhist painters to describe um, suffering and mourning, especially. I realize that I've lost track of time and I'm okay with that. So um, I'm going to... Um, actually speed through this a bit. Um, some of the war images are quite hard to look at um, in this exhibition, but um, these are details from a pair of screens that are not on view any longer, but they show um, um, the scenes of the civil wars of the Heian period as imagined through the lens of the early modern period. Um, A scene similar to what we've seen before. We were also able to show several 19th century examples um, um, reimagined as woodblock print triptychs, for example, some vertical, some horizontal, um, all from Tagawa school artists like this one. Others prints um, um, were, were, were offered offered to, to, to um, were presented to show sort of modern um, reimaginings of, of, of some of the horrors of the people involved in, in those wars. And so this is um, a reimagining of sort of um, the um, 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 desperation of a person who's killed a lot of people during war, who looks out in his garden at night um, and can only see the dead people. The the garden itself, a snow a snowy night garden, is um, nothing but skulls. <laughs> These are some of the mandalas that we were able to show. Um, one of which was um, loaned to us from the from Kurt Gitter. Um, this this really extraordinary Momoyama period mandala at right that shows sacred sites in Japan um, in the Kumano region. And we have a, quite a few objects on view that are related to this particular uh, region, including a pair of screens of Yoshino itself, dancing figures, for example, in the foreground here at this very important site. Um, beautiful for cherry blossoms, but also important um, uh, for Buddhist worship. Um, The next gallery is primarily about Zen images, um, and they um, um, speak to the um, the rhythms of life and of death, in the as, as imagined through um, the 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 words, the messages of of Zen priests themselves, such as this one. Um, it's an image of a bird, um, and it describes um, um, his pecking at a rock in the lower foreground as something akin to the practice of of a Zen priest um, meditating. A different kind of a different kind of environment uh, a different kind of enlightenment other messages from zen um, about salvation and, and life include um, um, some of these examples of bokuseki um, messages from zen priests that are worshipped um, in, in in the zen monastic and ritual environment um, um, almost like um, voices from the beyond these are some Taoist images um, from um, painters who are more familiar as painters of Buddhist Zen images, like Sesson here painting a Taoist image of a figure called Fei Changfeng. And 
in the galleries they're paired here um as a as a sort of um as a follow up to zen um um alongside images of of um, also by zen of a zen priest here at right an image that i like a lot of um by kengel shoke a, um, a late 15th century zenning painter um it shows um jong kui a queller of demons um who's worshiped uh, often as an auspicious figure um, in the safety of, of children, boys especially, um, but also for things um, um, such as the um, uh, praying away of, of epidemics, um, which is how we understand this image at right, which is painted in red, um, an image by Hokusai. And the galleries, they're, they're facing one another. Um, unfortunately, because I'm running out of time, um, um, I, um, I, we're going to skip um, a bit through some of the more uplifting material in the exhibition. I apologize. Um, um, there's a whole gallery um, that that I call Eternal Spring, and it's related to images that sort of mark the passages of time um, um, in a person's life, um, especially the lives of women in this case, um, for most of the paintings and um, um, textiles that were on view in this exhibition. So we have um, wedding dresses, for example, and um, um, really, really beautifully um, um, decorated auspicious paintings that were um, part of women's um, uh, wedding trousseau, for example, uh, like this one, which is on view right now, um, and shares the stage with a kimono, which you can see here in the distance from 1942, um, 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 a flock of birds that are in flight, um, um, an auspicious theme and a, and a very luxurious kimono for a very difficult time in Japan's history. Um, which is the subject of the of that last gallery. Uh, the last um, galleries of the Japanese um, of the suite of Japanese galleries um, um, were devoted to a rotating presentation of woodblock prints and um, textiles and photographs, um, primarily of the late 19th to um, late 20th century. Um, encompassing um, many of the wars of the modern period. Um, and they show images, uh, we showed images um, both of sort of early modern um, um, reimaginings of historical wars, but also modern imaginings of ongoing wars, um, including in the form of pretty um, uh, upsetting, uh, disturbing propaganda prints and, and textiles. Um, they're accompanied, um, as you can see in the background here, by um, photographs by artists such as Tomatsu Shome, who were um, children during the war and who grew up to be great documenters of, of Japan's post-war history. And, and drum. Um, I'm going to take one more minute. I apologize to the organizers for this delay. <laughs> Um, two more minutes. Um, there are, um, 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 I want to draw attention to 15 triptychs, um, woodblock triptychs that were um, 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 shown in this exhibition for the first time, actually. They've been at the Met since the late 19th century, but um, they'd never been shown because they had been an album that was causing them damage. And my extraordinary colleagues, Jennifer Perry and Masanobu Yamazaki, um, conservators of Japanese painting and works on paper, completely re, um, re, reimagine these. You're looking at photographs of their pre-conservation state, unfortunately, but and, uh, please go on view. Please go to the Japanese galleries and see them on view for the first time. Um, it's 15 battle triptychs um, of the late 19th century by artists of the Utagawa school, um, Kunisada, Kuniyoshi, others. Um, um, every one of them is, 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 is wonderful and, and visible because of some wonderful handiwork by some two great conservators. Here are some of them. They're on view alongside these um, uh, slightly more challenging um, 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 propaganda images, some of which show um, nationalistic um, uh, displays and, and also wartime scenes. I might just not mention this. And then um, the final gallery has been devoted to presentations of photography. Um, Four presentations devoted to three photographers. Um, um, I'm showing here the, the current rotation, which is um, um, five photographs by Tomatsu Shome, um, the artist I mentioned before. Um, these are from two post-war series, um, one from the late 50s, one from the mid 80s, um, um, that hint at um, lives lost. And these images, um, 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 like all of the uh, images in the last gallery for this exhibition, have um, 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 
um, convey that convey that message, the, the role of images in in dealing with uh, memories after the loss of a person. Um, this was the display in the first rotation by a by a young photographer, um, young when he made this, um, Kudi Asagi. And then finally, the last slide. This is um, this was the second rotation presentation of works by Ishiuchi Miyako, um, um, whose works deal with the loss of her mother. That's it. I apologize for the for the um, for the lengthy talk. Well. Thank you so much for for a fascinating talk about this incredible exhibition and, and the rotation. Um, we only have time for a couple of questions. Um, so I hope that um, I, I, I could quickly ask them of you. Um, we had someone from uh, a listener from um, Australia saying, is there a catalog uh, accompanying this amazing exhibition? Um, because uh, the, the lister lives in Australia, will be able to visit the Met, or is there a list of the works in the exhibition available so uh, the, the 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 participant can look at them more closely online? I have two answers to the question. Um, uh, the first is that the Met's um, uh, website. Um, if you go to the exhibitions uh, page of the Met's website, you can follow a link to um, this exhibition's um, website, or you can just Google. Anxiety and Hope in Japanese Art, and the very top link will, will take you to this exhibition. And it'll give you an option of clicking on um, exhibition objects. And you can see, in fact, all four rotations worth of objects, I believe, at the moment, although it's supposed to only show what's all currently on view. But you might get a sneak peek um, if you go right now. Uh, um, I might just change the slide to something more beautiful. Um, uh, the other uh, part of the answer is um, that there is a, um, a special issue of 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 impressions, um, a journal published by um, JASA, in fact, um, and edited by Julia Meach. That is um, um, that has um, um, someone might correct my number, but I believe seven um, articles uh, by seven different scholars devoted to um, works that have been included in this exhibition. And so, the, although it's not a um, catalog of um, um, the exhibition it does um, offer some um, interesting um, deep dives into individual objects that were included in the in the in the exhibition, and 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 um, and um, and thank you to all the people who were involved in that. It, I think it's it's meant to be released in um, in April. Wonderful, um, and then I'm just going to squeeze in one more question on uh, whether you can just briefly discuss the logistical challenges of presenting the objects on view since so many of them are, are so fragile. Thank you. Um, yeah, this is, a, um, this is the challenge of curating Japanese art is um, uh, the, 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 the management of exposure to light, uh, right? If you can get humidity under control, you you, um, 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 you, can, you, can, you, can, you can keep things sort of stable, but you can't you can't overexpose things. You can't leave things hanging in galleries for multiple years. And so, you know, we try to we try to rotate objects um, based on um, a schedule that 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 keeps them safe um, and well preserved. And so sometimes that means rotating things every three months, every six months, every nine months. In some cases, um, um, other things don't rotate. And so it's a it's a sort of puzzle of 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 lacquers and textiles and, and other photographs and other things. Um, some of the other logistical nightmares for this exhibition in particular were um, juggling uh, internal loans. The Met is such a large place that um, 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 to borrow these um, photographs, for example, from the photographs department involved a staff of, 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 of you know, more than a dozen people in that department, um, its own museum <laughs> uh, uh, um, devoted to photographs. And so um, something as simple as that um, um, it can be logistically difficult. Okay, and and one quick question: What was what would have been the use of the image of the health courtesan? 
um, um, uh, the story would be better told by the person who acquired this painting, which was my colleague, John Carpenter, um, okay. who, who has a really, really lovely uh, uh, and rousing presentation of it. But I'll just, um, I'll hint at it and let him um, uh, tell it another time. Uh, but it was used at a brothel. <laughs> um, 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 uh, she was um, she was um, understood to be an enlightened being in the medieval period, um, or an enlightened person in the medieval period, despite her status as a as a sex worker. Um, 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 but she um, she um, was affiliated with uh, with a monk at Dai Tokuji, um, who um, who was frequent uh, uh, who frequently visited the red light district, um, and so it was an appropriate subject even in the nineteenth century for a brothel. Um, it's almost an advertisement, um, but her kimono, the hell courtesan, is decorated as a, a, with with the hellscape. <laughs> Thank you so but much. That's a complicated, interesting story that that John, I hope, will will tell someday. Very good. Oh, oh one one thing I should mention um, about uh, the the uh, impressions uh, with the articles that you just mentioned that 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 oh. apparently will be arriving um, or in sometime in mid February. Oh, good. Uh, and the person who probably reminds you of that is the person who I want to mention next as well. There also is a really, really, um, uh, uh, there, are, there are lots of publications about the hell courtesan. So the person who asked that question can refer to articles about other examples of this subject, including an article by Julia Meach on, on, on a work in the Weber collection that was not in the exhibition, but of the same subject. Okay, and one, one quick question note. Um, uh, the listener notes that some of the images, uh, such as, for example, a Bishamon 10, seem to be very similar to Tibetan images. And is it the case that the, uh, the Tibetan images were, were, were transmitted through China or um, and or Korea to Japan? It's not a direct, um, it's not, a, it's not, a, it's not an, uh, an issue of sort of direct um, um, transmission, but rather of multiple dialogues taking place throughout Asia, um, different, different regions within Asia, um, China being at the center of, of all of the um, um, regional dialogues that you just described. So one between um, um, you know, all of uh, China and all of it, all of, all of um, all of the sort of cultures around it, plus um, 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 communication from the, from the West and, and Far East. Very it's more good. complicated than direct transmission. Okay, well, I'm I'm sorry we we've gone over, but it's just been such a fabulous uh, a lecture, and thank you so much. And I hope many of our listeners will be able to see this third rotation. And, um, and I'd like to thank everyone again for participating in today's webinar. Um, we'll be posting a recording on the JASA website soon and look forward to seeing you throughout the year. We've planned um, events for the first half of 2024 and have distributed a list of these events to our members uh, earlier this month. And our next webinar is on February 7th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Birmingham Museum of Art uh, lead curator, Katie Paul entitled Surprises in the South, Japanese Art in Alabama. And we hope you can join us then. And until the next time, many thanks. Bye-bye.